As far as fantastical Nazi plans went, this one was near the very top, a plan so outlandish it feels more Star Trek than Third Reich. This is all going to get a little bit far-fetched, but let's go along with this preposterous Nazi space plan because, well, why not? The Sonnengewehr. German pronunciations. <laughs> The Sonnengenwehr, or Sun Gun, I'm just going to call it Sun Gun, alright, that's easier, as we have come to know it in the English speaking world my world, would have taken destruction to an entirely different level. The idea was to place a giant mirror with a surface area of roughly nine square kilometers in space, which could have been maneuvered to burn and destroy entire cities by focusing the sun's heat rays on them. If that sounds a little familiar, it's pretty much because it's the same as when children use magnifying glasses to burn objects. And if I was to tell you that Adolf Hitler was the kind of child who used to take enjoyment in burning animals using magnifying glasses, well, would you be surprised? Probably not. Obviously, this project didn't make it very far, but it does give us an intriguing insight into the lengths at which the Nazis would be willing to go to ensure their global domination. I don't think anyone was doubting what the Nazis were willing to do. <laughs> We've covered a lot of Nazi weaponry here on Mega Projects. It always does well. Thank you for watching. <laughs> of course, not because of any ideological reasons, <laughs> bloody well hope not, but rather simply because they were just so darn good at making them, which almost certainly meant they were so much harder to beat in the long run. The V1 and V2 rockets, the Panzer tanks, the Messerschmitt aircraft, and the first assault rifle, the STG-44, all came to the fore as the Nazis began steamrolling armies left, right, and center. Thankfully for everyone else, the Allies finally managed to organize themselves enough to fight back, and with the Red Army at the gates of Berlin, Hitler placed his own Walther PPK 7.65 to his temple and pulled the trigger on April the 30th, 1945. One week later, what remained of the Nazi High Command surrendered and the war in Europe came to an end. The Nazis had utilized some of the most technologically advanced weaponry that the world had ever seen, but thankfully it hadn't been enough to see them succeed. Things might have been quite different, however, if their most outrageous killing machine had come to fruition. But before we dive into the madness of the Nazis, let me take you back to ancient times and an inventor and brilliant mind by the name of Archimedes. If that name sounds vaguely familiar to you, you get zero points because Archimedes is super, super important and famous. Archimedes was responsible for calculating pi, numerous calculus proofs nearly 2,000 years before calculus was even called calculus, as well as discovering that objects lose an amount of weight in water equal to the weight of the fluid they displace, a theory that became Archimedes' principle of hydrostatics, an important guy. But we're not concerned with his mathematical musings here, but rather a machine that was said to keep the Romans at bay from his home city of Syracuse in Sicily, a machine that has been recorded through the ages as the death ray. Now let me just say before we move on, there's plenty of debate about just what this weapon was and in fact if it even existed in the first place. Considering we're talking about events that happened around 212 BC, time has a habit of adding layers of myth, exaggeration and even fabrication until it's difficult to know, well, what's what. Whether the death ray existed or not, its presence in history has inspired others to attempt to emulate it. The story goes that the death ray was a series of mirrors that reflected concentrated sun rays onto the invading Roman fleet, burning their wooden vessels before they could reach the shore. Sounds pretty far-fetched, and it could well be. The first recorded mention of the death ray came over 300 years after the fall of Syracuse, which begs the question if it was such an extraordinary weapon, why didn't anybody mention it? In recent years, numerous teams have set out to either prove or disprove the science behind the contraption. The TV series Myth Busters, of course they'd be making an appearance twice, failed to replicate the death ray and labeled it a myth, but experiments in 1973 by a Greek engineer and later by MIT in 2005 did successfully manage to replicate it. Well, sort of. They managed to upset wooden boats alight using mirrors. It's still a world away from the story of the death ray that almost single-handedly took on an entire Roman army. As I mentioned earlier, whether this is completely accurate or not, it doesn't really matter to this story. The concept of using mirrors to weaponize the sun's rays is one that has stuck. Alrighty, so now let's stride forward 
2,000 years. In 1923, German rocket scientist Hermann Oberth proposed what is widely considered to be the first mirror in space plan. Still 10 years before Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and began rapidly descending down the rabbit hole into his Aryan wonderland, Oberth's ideas they were based on purely peaceful motives. He initially envisioned using his mirrors in space to illuminate ports and to thaw frozen rivers. We've certainly found much easier methods to achieve both of these aims, but for simply thinking outside the box and, well, the planet, you've kind of got to give it to him. What was once a peaceful plan to add a little light to the world and break up those frozen German rivers, well, it began to take on an altogether darker tone with the rise of fascism. Shocking. The story does get very vague from this point, and much of what we know comes from an article that appeared in Life magazine in 1945, shortly after the end of World War II. As you can imagine, with Germany a smoldering wreck and many of its citizens teetering on the verge of starvation, people weren't exactly boasting of how their ex-Führer had wanted to build a giant mirror in space that would have destroyed the world. The article stated that German scientists had been in the planning stage – how far along in that stage isn't mentioned – to eventually build a space station that could accommodate people as well as one giant mirror to enslave mankind. Hmm, Nazis, up to no good, yet again, as they often are, especially on these channels where we cover all of their bad stuff. The station would have been constructed in space, with components traveling up using a series of rocket launchers. This was still roughly 15 years before Sputnik became the first man-made object to be launched into space, so you can't exactly say the Nazis weren't thinking long term. Rocketry was one area that the Germans were well ahead of the Allies in, and throw a successful rocket launch into space during the years of World War II was well beyond them, it was certainly something they were moving towards. The space station would have orbited the Earth at a height of 35,700 185 kilometers and come with docking units for supply rockets and solar powered generators. The docking procedure set out was particularly interesting because it called for a small hole measuring roughly 9.1 meters in diameter to be left in the mirror that rockets could enter and exit from. From what we can see from the images, the rocket would have docked a little like a spear entering a soft object. The top of the rocket would have nestled inside the station while the back remained outside. Oxygen would have been supplied through hydroponic gardens, and in particular thousands of pumpkin plants which are excellent oxygen producers. The plants themselves would need to get their light from artificial fluorescent lighting because direct sunlight without any protective atmosphere to filter out harmful rays would soon kill all of the plants. Those in the station would have worn shoes soled with magnets to keep their feet firmly planted, while helmets would have been mandatory to protect against forceful crashes into the ceiling. as the article eloquently puts it. They even went as far as choosing an appropriate material to build the station. Metallic sodium is common among natural compounds, and some of its earliest uses were for sodium cyanide and sodium peroxide, but has gone on to be used as a heat exchange medium in nuclear power plants. Well, the estimated construction time was set at 15 years, and even came with a projected cost of 3 million Deutschmarks, about $7.5 million, $107 million today. Now, any sane person will know that this estimate was horribly inaccurate, especially with what we know about the cost of rocket launches. But it's important to remember that the Nazis didn't even have rockets that could go into space at this point, so they almost certainly couldn't have foreseen the enormous costs involved. If plans for the station were vague, details about the sun gun itself were even more so. The construction would have no doubt followed a similar pattern to the station, with components brought up by rockets and then assembled in space, and again, most likely using metallic sodium. This would have been a parabolic reflector, meaning in the shape of a paraboloid which curves upwards at the edges. This is a style of mirror that the Germans believed would have created a stronger light beam than a concave mirror. The crew on the station would have most likely received encoded orders via radio or wireless telegraph. Once they were given the order to attack a certain target, they would activate a series of boosters which would rotate the giant mirror to a carefully calculated position. After which, in theory, the sun's rays could be concentrated on the focal point, resulting in the total incineration of everything in its path. With the destruction now complete, the mirror could be repositioned so that it was once again facing away from the Earth. <laughs> Thank you.
Using the rough ideas that the Nazis set out, it's unlikely it would have worked. Certainly not how they envisioned it, at least. The enormous amount of time, money, and resources required to build such a device would have likely put page to Hitler's dreams long before a rocket even made it into space. It's also not clear whether a single massive parabolic mirror would have been able to produce a beam capable of destroying very specific targets on Earth. An altogether different approach would have been to build a series of sun guns and then combine their power, but that's even more ridiculous. As far-fetched as this plan sounded in 1945 and even today, One Nation has briefly experimented with solar mirrors in space. On the 27th of October 1992, Russia launched Znaimya-2 on board one of its resupply missions to the Mir space station. This was a 20-meter-wide space solar mirror, which was deployed on the 4th of February 1993 and created a 5-kilometer-wide bright spot, which traveled across Europe from southern France to western Russia at a steady speed of 8 kilometers an hour. Its luminosity was equal to that of a full moon, so nowhere near enough to do any damage to anything on Earth. That morning was particularly cloudy across Europe, but a few did witness the strange light in the sky as the beam moved across the continent. In 1999, Znamia 2.5 was launched with a luminosity of between 5 and 10 full moons, but soon after being deployed, it got caught on the antenna of the spacecraft, carrying it and ripped. Despite attempts to free it, the project was eventually abandoned, and Znamia 2.5 was eventually deorbited. A third Znamia had been in the pipeline at the time, with a reported diameter of 60 to 70 meters, but after the failure, of Znamia 2.5, the entire series was abandoned. The Nazi sun gun is one of those stories that sounds too fantastical to possibly be true. It's almost certain that whoever was working on this project didn't get past the very preliminary phases as the cost and time projection were well off. But the fact that it was even being considered by reasonable individuals is really quite astonishing. Forget nuclear weapons. If Hitler had managed to construct the sun gun, the whole world would have been in serious trouble. But luckily for us, it never happened and remains one of the most ludicrously brilliant concepts that we've ever heard of. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like more content from me, why not check out a new channel that I've done called Explored, X-P-L-R-D. It's a shorter form, more documentary style than this stuff. I hope you like it, and thank you for watching.